Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 14 of the simple series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials and today we're looking at sprite clipping on the Amiga. We looked at drawing a bitmap sprite of the Chibico mascot onto the screen and you can see it here and this time we've extended the drawing and um, joystick moving routine and we are now able to crop our sprite so that it can go partially off the screen just like that so we can now go off the screen the other thing we've done is we're actually using the blitting routine so that we can quickly draw our sprite to the screen but that is adding a limitation that we're having to draw in 16-bit words so um, we've got that kind of blocky effect of a large chunk disappearing at the edges of the screen though we could make our screen wider our logical screen wider than the visible screen to resolve that so that's the example we're going to be looking at today we're going to be looking at the new cropping routine and the improved drawing routine that is now using blitting but first of all what we're going to do is we're going to need to discuss the logical unit format that I use in these clipping tutorials I use the same format in all of the tutorials so let's go over to the um, the theatre screen and let's have a look at this image here so basically when we are drawing our sprite we're going to have a sprite that is going to move around the screen and this is representative of our sprite so it's going to move around the screen and we're going to need to have it able to be at positions that are not entirely on the screen and because I try and do everything in an, a way that works well on 8-bit systems I decided to use coordinates that went from 0 to 255 so I can work within a single byte on my 8-bit systems the problem is this can cause a bit of an issue when we're working in a lot of these systems they often work at a 256 by 192 screen size so we need some coordinates that aren't visible on the screen so I use a logical coordinate system which is basically that there are two physical pixels to one logical unit and then what I do is I center the visible screen within that logical screen so if you look at it, this diagram here, this is assuming a 128 by 196 logical screen, which is 256 by 192, and that this would be in the center of a screen that would have a, an invisible area around it. So if we've got our Chibico character here, only this corner here is actually visible. The dark area here is within the invisible area of the logical screen. Now, of course, the Amiga isn't 256 by 192. We're going to be working at 320 by 200. So um, it's not quite the same, but the theory stands all the same. So that's what we're going to be doing with regards to logical units. Now, let's discuss the clipping routine that I'm using in my tutorial. So let's just go over to the blackboard here and let's just very quickly discuss the way that I am doing the cropping. So we've got our screen here. That is our screen. And then we've got some kind of sprite somewhere. So maybe that is our sprite. And our sprite, whatever shape it actually is, when we draw it, we're going to draw it in a rectangle. We're using XOR today. That's an inversion routine. So in, if we draw, the, um, the black areas won't actually delete anything under them. And if we draw twice to the same position, the second time we'll remove it, which is very convenient for simple tests. So we've got our sprite, and it's going to move around the screen. And when it goes off the screen, we're going to have to do things depending on where it's gone. So for example, if it goes over the top of the screen like that, well, we're going to need to remove this part of the source bitmap data and we're going to have to change our height to this amount here. Well, if it goes over the left-hand side of the screen, well, the procedure is going to be different. We're going to need to skip this part of the first line, change the width of the sprite to this, and we're then going to need to skip part of the sprite be before each following line. On the right hand side of the screen well we're going to start from the very first byte of the source sprite but we're going to have to skip this part after each line here we're going to have to change the width to this as well if we're at the bottom of the screen well we're just going to have to change the height of the sprite and we won't need to do anything else uh, so it's going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to have to do different things on all sides and of course our sprite can be off multiple sides at the same time we're going to have to do multiple things at the same time so a lot of different things we might have to do with our sprite just depending on its position okay so let's take a look at our code now we're not going to discuss the things that we've discussed in the simple series before so we're not going to cover the joystick routines we're not going to discuss the screen setup routines we're just going to discuss the new code so the first thing that we've got this new here is these definitions of the logical screen so we've got a minimum and x and y coordinate and that is the top top left of the logical screen that's visible and we've got a width and a height and we've defined 160 by 96 as our visible logical screen and those coordinates are going to be used to configure our clipping routine now at the start of our code here we're having to turn on the DMA for the blitter because we're going to need that blitter and then when we are drawing our player sprite to the screen 
we are going to change the code a little bit. This is based on the original Simple Series where we were moving around and we couldn't go off the screen, but now we can go off the screen. So what we're doing here is we are defining the width and height of our sprite. Now our sprite is 48 by 48 pixels, but there's two logical units per pixel. So we are using a size of 24 by 24 here. And that's our source. And then we are defining our source bitmap, and that's the bitmap data in memory into the memory address register A6. We're then running our do crop routine, and our do crop routine will set the carry if the sprite is entirely off the screen, if there's nothing we want to draw. So if our sprite has gone entirely off the screen, we're just going to give up and we're going to return. But if we have something to draw, then we're going to actually have to draw our sprite. And we're going to have to set up the blitter and do the blitting, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. First of all, Let's take a look at the do crop routine and let's see how that works. Okay, so here's our do crop routine. Now, our do crop routine uses a variety of registers. D1 and D4 are the X and Y position in logical units. D3 and D6 are the width and the height in logical units. And A6 is the memory address of the bitmap source data that we're going to transfer to the screen. Now, we use D2 and D5 as temporary registers for calculations, and we're zeroing here sprite H clip, and this is the amount that we need to skip after drawing each line if our sprite is off the left or the right, because in both cases we're going to need to skip a few bytes after each line. So that's what sprite H clip is used for. Okay, so we're going to consider each side of the screen one at a time. So first we're going to look at the top of the screen. So we're clearing D0 here, and then we're moving our Y position into D0, and we're subtracting the minimum Y, and this is effectively moving our sprite upwards in logical units. And if our sprite was partially off the screen, this is going to push this into a negative. And in that case, we're going to need to do some cropping. So we're going to negate that value, converting it back to a positive, and this is now the amount we need to remove from the top of the sprite. So we're now comparing that to the height of the sprite, because if it's the entire height of the sprite, there's nothing on the screen. So that's what we're doing there. And if we are all off the screen, we're going to jump to all off screen this routine here. And all that does, if we find it down here, is it sets the carry and returns, and that is telling our calling routine to give up, because there's nothing to draw. If there is something to draw, we're going to work out how much. So what we're doing is we are moving that into D5 temporarily, and then we're setting D0 to 0. Now, D0 is now a recalculated start position, and this is one step closer to being a pixel destination. So we're going to store that for later, but if our sprite is partially off the top of the screen, then the draw position of the first pixel we need to draw is actually position zero. So we're, in that case, zeroing it here. That's why we're clearing D0 here. And we're moving the new Y position into D4 for later. Okay, we've considered the top of the screen. Now let's take a look at the bottom. So we're now adding the height of the sprite, and we are now comparing that to the height of the screen. And we're seeing if there's anything going over the bottom of the screen. And if there is, then we need to crop. Otherwise, we're going to just jump over to no B crop here. But if there is something to crop, we're now comparing that to the height of the sprite. And again, if it's the entire height of the sprite or more, then we want to give up drawing. Otherwise, we're storing the amount to remove from the bottom in D2. So we've got the amount to remove from the top in that kind of case in D5. And we've got the amount to remove from the bottom in that kind of case in D2. So we've got those two values, and we now need to use those to update our sprite. So we're adding those two together and seeing if anything needs to be removed from the height of the sprite. And if it is, we're removing that from the D6 height of the sprite. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount we need to remove from the top of the sprite, because we need to skip some bytes before we start drawing anything if the top needs changing. So what we're doing here is we are shifting D5 to the left by one here. And this is to calculate the number of lines that we need to remove. Now, what we're doing next is we're multiplying the amount we need to remove per line by the number of logical units in a line. And this is also effectively the number of bytes in a line. So this is calculating the amount we need to skip from the source bitmap to get the new start position. And we're adding that to A6, updating that source bitmap memory address. We've now correctly updated our sprite calculations for cropping the top and the bottom of the sprites. So and now we're going to do the left and the right. So we're going to do that next. And we're basically, we're doing the same thing. So we're clearing D2 and D5. Those are our temporary variables, and we don't need them anymore for the top and the bottom. And we're doing basically the same thing for the left and the right. So we're moving our X position into D0, subtracting 
our x coordinate here, our minimum x for the screen. And if that has gone negative, then we must be somewhere like maybe this, where it must be partially off the left hand side of the screen. So we're going to have to deal with that. So we're negating that to convert that back to a positive number, comparing to the width of the sprite. And if the sprite is entirely off the screen, we're going to give up again. Otherwise, we're going to work out how much we need to remove. And we are working in words because we're using the um, blitter. The blitter can only work in words. So we're converting this into a word value that is appropriate to use. So we're masking, removing the bottom three bits of the logical units, and we're rounding up here. And that is to calculate the number of whole words that we need to remove. But the problem with this is that even though we are now drawing a certain number of words, we still need to move smoothly once we've removed a few words from the left hand side. And so to do that, we're taking the bits that we can't crop off as an actual destination data and we're converting those into an offset. And this is going to correctly allow for smooth movement of our sprite. Now. And if we were just zeroing D0 here, then we wouldn't end up with very smooth movement when our sprite was partially off the left hand side of the screen. We'd get very jerky movement instead, which wouldn't be as nice. So we've got that E or there, that and and that E or there to do that. And then we're updating the new X position here. OK, so we've handled the cropping of the left hand side of the sprite. Now we need to consider the right hand side of the sprite. So what we're doing here is we're adding the width of the sprite and we're then comparing that to the width of the screen in logical units. And we are now subtracting that and then seeing if there's anything left. And if there is anything left, we must need to remove something from the right hand side of the screen. And so what we're doing here is once again converting this to a number of words and we're storing that in D2. So once again, we've got our amount to remove from the left in D5, the amount to remove from the right in D2. And now we're going to use those and work out the new source memory address for the sprite and also the new width of the sprite. So what we're doing here is we're adding those two together and seeing if anything needs to be moving. And what we're doing here is we're calculating the number of words that we need to skip after each line of our sprite here. We're then subtracting that value from the width. This is effectively calculating the new width of our sprite because whether our sprite has gone off the left hand side or the right, we're going to need to remove some data. So we are updating that just here. And then finally, what we're doing is we're taking the amount to remove from the left, converting that to a number of bytes. And then we are adding that to a six because again, our starting date of our sprite here won't be shown if we're partially off the left hand side. So what we've done there is calculated all the new values for the sprite. We're then clearing the carry here and finally we're returning. So we've now calculated the required cropping and the rest of the job is going to be done by our blitting routine. So what we're doing here is we're waiting for the blitter to finish any previous jobs. And the way we're doing that is we are bit testing bit 14 of the DMA con R register that will test if the blitter is finished or not. And once it has, we are then going to just need to calculate all the values we need. Now we're calculating our X position in words here, our Y position in lines. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the get screen pause function. This will calculate the VRAM destination accordingly and that will allow us to get the destination memory address that we want to write this sprite to. Now once we've got that VRAM destination we are going to need to set up all of our registers. So A6 is our source memory address of our sprite and A2 is now the destination in screen memory but we're going to use the screen memory destination twice once in the C source and once in the D destination. And the reason for that is we're doing an XOR operation. So we're XORing the source data in the A pointer with the screen memory in the C pointer and writing that to the D pointer. That's how we're doing things. The other thing we're needing to do is we're needing to set the pixel shift by bit shifting of the A source. So that's so that we can do our nice smooth movement because as I said before, the, um, the blitter can only work in words. So what we're doing here is we are getting D5 back, which is our X position. We're converting that to a number of pixels and then we're masking the four bits that are the number of pixels within the word that we need to move to get the smooth movement. And we're then, we've got to then move the bits from down here in the 16 bit word to up here for the um, BLT control register, they need to be up here within that register. So that's what we're doing here. We're also setting the logical operation and we're using not a times C plus a times not C. That is effectively an XOR operation. And we are then just setting up that 
and that will do the job for us. Now we're setting up the masks here. This is to allow for our bit shifting to work correctly. And the reason we're doing that is we're having to effectively draw one extra word to the screen to allow for the smooth movement here. Now what we are then doing here is we are loading in our sprite H clip. This is the amount we need to remove from each line. We're converting that to a number of words here. And then what we're doing is we are subtracting two and that's because we are drawing two extra bytes to the screen that aren't in the source because as I say, we're having to draw an extra word to the screen each time to allow for that smooth clipping. And we're storing the amount we need to remove after each line into the A or mod, which is the amount that we need to shift by after each line's been drawn. We're then doing the same for the screen here. We're calculating the screen destination and the amount we need to skip after each line to get to the next line of the screen. Finally, all we need to do is we need to set up the width and the height. When we write to BLT size, it will actually start the DMA. So all we need to do is we need to take our width bits from D3 and we need to shift them into the right position. And we need to round up by one word. And that's so that we've got that one extra word for our bit shifting because we are effectively setting one of the words to not show to the screen at all here. So that's what we're doing there. And then all we're doing is we're shifting the height the width needs to be in the bottom bits here. That's the width in word. The height in line need to be in the top bits here. So we're just shifting those and combining them together. We're then writing that to the BLT size and that starts the DMA transfer and that will start the blitting to the screen. And that's how we've successfully got our sprite to the screen there. So there we go. A little bit complicated. The um, the DMA transfers are, are a bit of a pain, to be honest, but the, the thing is with the Amiga, because of the memory layout of the screen, it's not as convenient as the X68000, and we don't have the hardware sprites of the um, of the Genesis. We don't at least have as convenient hardware sprites as the Genesis. So really, uh, we're probably going to want to do something like this to get good smooth moving graphics on the screen of the Amiga. So there we go. Anyway, as always, you can go to my website, you can download the source code for today's example and the build scripts and the um, bitmap files and everything else and have a go with it yourself. And as I always say, you're welcome to use anything in my source code in anything you want, even if it's commercial, I really don't care. Have some fun with it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.